Hi guys, it's Jeff at Sirens Racing. I'm up here on one of my favorite trails, uh, doing some testing today. We just got a, I just got this 300 XC yesterday. I'm gonna turn it into a mule. Uh, right now it's in totally stock form. The only thing I've changed is I've raised the shift lever for my big boots. And uh, other than that, everything is stock. I mean, I've of course adjusted the bars and the levers and things like that, but uh, it's a bone stalker. And, you know, it's a very nice bike. I'd say out of the crate, you know, compared to an out of the crate bike from previous years, this is uh, an excellent bike. You know, they've, they've really turned around the motor performance on this bike. You know, the TPI models in stock form were kind of soft on the bottom. The guys always said that their carburetor bikes were pulled stronger on the bottom and I agree with that uh, this bike pulls very hard off the bottom I'm actually riding it today it's really dry and slick so I'm riding it in the dumb in the dumb map the the lower performance map because I'm trying to get some traction and these Dunlop tires are not cutting it on this on this stuff you know this decomposed granite stuff that we ride on uh, so those are coming off right away uh, anyhow, you know, my first impression of this bike is it's an excellent platform that can be evolved into an excellent bike. But, you know, all I'm so already sick of all these buzzwords and buzz phrases that I'm seeing on the Internet. You know, game changer and best bike ever and all that type of BS. Well, uh, I think it can be turned into a, a somewhat of a game changer, you know, with a lot of suspension work. A uh, little bit of tuning on the engine and uh, a few other things. But out of the box, it's definitely not a game changer. I mean, come on, it's a box stock bike. It, it rides like every other KTM I've ridden, only stiffer. Every other box stock KTM. Uh, with my 23 300XCW that's got a head on it and I get ECU, you know, the performance is very similar to this bike. And my suspension is a thousand times better than this bike. This bike makes me extremely nervous. It, uh, it pings off of every rock and root that I hit. Uh, going through rock sections, it, it's downright scary. And uh, so if you want to call that a game changer, go right ahead. But it's not in my book. You know, the, the shock on this thing is absolutely horrendous. It's horrible. It's the stiffest friggin' shock I've ever ridden uh, outside of a Supercross bike. I mean, it it just will drive that seat right up your butt. I mean, it, it is not compliant whatsoever. Um, you know, I've seen the magazine articles and other videos guys have been putting online saying how the handle's great and it's stable and it more planted in the front. Well, I see the stuff they're riding on, and okay, maybe so, because they're running out and whooped out tracks and whooped out trails and on that kind of stuff, yeah, it'd probably be fine. Because if you want to pound whoops, this thing would pound some whoops. But uh, I think like most trail riders, I tend to avoid trails that are blown out with, with whoops everywhere. Uh, to me, that's just not quality riding. So I prefer a bike that's a lot more compliant in the rocks and the roots. And I didn't expect this to be compliant in the rocks and roots because it's a box stock race bike. Uh, you know, it's the XC model. So I'm going to throw a national shock on it. Uh, we've got one of those being built right now and I'm going to throw some lucky cartridges in the front in the meantime before my uh, shock gets in because it might take a couple weeks before those guys get it to me I don't know uh, I'm going to send the shock off to a friend, friend of mine over at Greg at Factory Suspension Works in Montrose, Colorado he does excellent work and he got his hands on one of the Husky FC models very early on which is the same chassis same overly stiff shock and he's been working on that for the last few months and he's got the suspension totally dialed uh for you guys out there who have these bikes i know a lot of our friends back in the midwest have already sent their suspension to greg and are extremely happy with it uh, for me this bike is almost unrivable right unrideable in, in the gnarly rock sections i mean you don't know which way it's going to go it, it goes everywhere except for straight i can tell you that uh, and it's definitely not a comforting feel uh, or confidence-inspiring feel. 
But so I'll get that off to, to Greg, the shock. Uh, and then when my national shock comes in, I'll put that on. In the meantime, I'm also going to change the forks over to the springs with the lucky conversion kit. Uh, the front end is better than years past, this air fork, but it's still way too harsh in the rocks and the roots. You know, it, uh, it's not bad over small roots, but the bigger roots, ooh, it will give you a jolt and send you, send you packing off the trail. So, uh, guys, that's my first impressions on this bike. You know, it's absolutely beautiful looking bike. I, I like the new graphics. I know some of you guys are going to whine about the purple over here, but I kind of like it. I like the orange seat. And actually, that's the most comfortable box stock KTM seat I think I've ever ridden. It doesn't quite feel like a. it's made out of concrete like the previous years. Uh, the gearing is definitely too tall for what I'll be doing on the night uh, gnarly trails, but I expected that. Well, it's an XC model. It's, it's, a, it's not intended for super gnarly trails. It's a race bike. So, guys, I'm going to put some mile, more miles on it. Uh, get, uh, I'm going to make another little quick video when I get home about a couple things. So, stay tuned. Please subscribe to us. If you want more information about these bikes, you, you know, it, it's best if you subscribe. That way you get it instantly when I, when I post it. And I'll be putting out a lot of content on these bikes, on everything from, from chassis setup to suspension, engine performance. Uh, so there's a hair scrambles going on back in um, Missouri today, the state of Missouri. And a friend of mine is back there. Uh, he's a sweep rider. And he texted me already today that he's picked up uh, three guys that ran out of gas on these bikes, 250s and 300s, at 30 miles. They ran out of gas at 30 miles, and they still had six inches of gas in this side of the tank. So they still had gas way up into here, but the, but the bike stopped running. Because the fuel pump is in the center of the tank now, up on a pocket. It's really kind of a bizarre design. I'm not sure what they were thinking there. Uh, we'll have to figure out something to do with that. But, you know, a small tank, two and a quarter gallons, 30 miles. Of course, those are race conditions. Uh, and I don't know if they were A riders that had it fully pinned or if they were C riders that were cruising along. But uh, I've already heard of quite a few other reports of really poor gas mileage. So, and then, so that tells me that this bike needs some tuning, that it's running too rich. And it feels a little bit rich, but uh, I tell you, this thing pulls strong. It, it's a very nice running motor. Very nice. Uh, big kudos to KTM on the motor. Suspension and the chassis, you know, this new frame. Uh, I think they got a little carried away with how stiff they made it, but we'll find out. Uh, I'm open-minded about everything here, and I'll keep pursuing all this. But all right, guys, uh, talk to you soon. Please subscribe to us on... YouTube, like us on Facebook and Instagram. Give us a shout out when you can. Get out and do some throttle therapy. Help out on your trails. Uh, be kind to all the other trail users out there. And uh, it's all for now.